talked about binding energy, the amount of energy required to split apart the nucleus into its constituent parts. And also, if we wanted to put it together, it would be the same way. So either taking it apart or putting it back together. First thing we really need to go back to, which is kind of like a chemistry thing, is what is the unified atomic mass unit? Everything is based on carbon-12. And part of the reason that's based on carbon-12 is because we, you and I, are made of carbon. And we think that all living things in the universe are also made of carbon. So it actually has an AMU, or what sometimes we refer to as just a U, of 12. <coughs> Strange thing about AMU is that free neutrons and protons have different masses when they're bound as compared to when they are alone or not bound. So here we have hydrogen with an electron. But what I'm telling you is that if I put hydrogen together <coughs> or a proton together, with six protons and six neutrons, then what do we have here? Now we have carbon, right? Well, what I'm going to tell you now is that each of these protons weigh a little bit less when they're here in this configuration as when they're here. They weigh, or their mass, is a little bit less. So the largest mass per nucleon is when nuclei are free. Remember, nucleons are inside of the nucleus. So when they're free, they have the biggest mass. They're the fattest that they can ever be. When they're bound together, they are less massive. My father used to tell me this really strange thing. And uh, it kind of applies in this situation, but he used to say it about intelligence. He used to say that you're very smart on your own, but when you get around your friends, your intelligence is basically you take the highest intelligence in the group and divide it by the number of people. So if I was hanging out with one person, I would be half as smart. If I was hanging out with two people, I would be one third as smart. And the more people that I hung out with, the less smart that I would be. And that's truly a, a father's advice, I think. But it kind of applies in this situation where if the nucleon is alone, the mass is the largest. And the mass actually goes down the more that it is with other nucleons. So here's a table of the isotope that we're talking about, the symbol of it, so you can actually see the different uh, atomic numbers and mass numbers, and then the mass <coughs> in AMU, and then the mass per nucleon. And this is the one that we're really concerned with over here, the mass per nucleon. Why is this happening? Why is the actual nucleon mass getting smaller when it's together with its friends? This is a cartoon kind of representing the same thing, is that when we have a magnet on a scale, it pushes down with the force of one newton, but then when we put it together, suddenly it weighs less. E equals mc squared, or in this case, E equals delta mc squared. This mass is actually a way of storing energy. <laughs> How much energy is stored inside of a paper clip of one gram? Well, what I've done here is I've actually used E equals mc squared to calculate the amount of energy stored inside of the mass of a paper clip. Quick side note, this only works if all of the mass is converted into energy, which most of the time, not all the mass is converted into energy. It's only that binding mass that mass that changes just a little bit. The particles are still actually there. So I took the paper clip as one gram. So E equals mass times C squared. So energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. This idea of light speed, how does that actually relate to matter and energy? Well, they are connected. They are integrally connected. In other words, there's a connection between them that we don't fully understand yet as humans. This is showing us something fundamental about the universe. That mass is actually tied to this strange thing that's known as the speed limit in our universe. Nothing can go faster than the speed of light. All right, here I've got a few particles. 
I've got two neutrons, and I've got uh, two different situations. So one on the top and then one on the bottom. The ones on the top are actually stuck together. They're bound together with energy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in a couple uh, bits of energy here. And this energy now is actually holding these two particles together. These are, this energy is the bond that they're actually having together. And so as these two particles on the bottom are actually separated then, instead of having the particles just right here in the middle, these particles or this energy then actually becomes part of the mass of these nucleons here and adds to their mass, which means that when they are separated from each other, they have just slightly more mass here than they do here, because this energy is actually added to the mass of the particles as they're separated. What this means is that the mass is not really being changed into energy, but it's just that binding energy that is being released at this point.